I'm Mike Swain, and this is Stu Yamatake, my assistant. Welcome to Basic Judo 2. This is the second tape in a series designed for instructors on how to teach judo. There are four ways to win in judo. Throwing, pinning, choking, and arm locks, three of which are achieved by grappling. Therefore, it is important that a student have a strong base in grappling in order to build their confidence in executing their standing techniques. Basic Grappling Movements In lesson one, the first movement I teach is what I call the beach ball theory. The idea is to stay tucked in a ball while moving in different directions. Start by rocking front to back, then side to side. Make sure your head is off the mat. Increase your rocking, then kick your legs over your head side to side. In theory, when you jump on top of a beach ball, you roll off. Therefore, from this position, you can better defend against your attackers. Also, this drill familiarizes your student's body to the mat. The key points to remember are keep your elbows and your knees close together. Your head should be off the mat and your chin tucked in. Try not to stay on your back. Stay on one side or the other. By staying on your side, this keeps your opponent off balance. In lesson two, this drill teaches how to keep your attacker in front of you. By digging your heels in and keeping your hips slightly off the mat, your body can quickly change directions. Next, have your partner move side to side and try to keep him in front of you. If you let him pass your legs, then half your defense is gone. This is a critical moment in grappling that you must prevent from happening. As in standing judo, the goal is to use your opponent's strength against himself. By using your legs and feet as hooks on his legs, this makes your partner pull you around instead of using your own energy. Lesson 3, the reverse bicycle. This is an important exercise for offense and defense. First, put your hips into the air, touch your knees to your chest, and kick your heels while extending your legs. Next, while lying on your back and moving side to side, keep your hands in front of you, touch your knees to your chest, and fully extend your legs, kicking with your heels. Here's a practical example of how the reverse bicycle is used to turn over your opponent. Lesson 4, the windmill exercise. This drill is important for defense. Start by pointing your toe and drawing two circles in the opposite direction. You increase the speed by keeping your hips flexible and moving side to side. In a practical application, you can see how your feet can be used as two more hands by blocking your opponent's arms, hips, and legs. Now let's watch the beach ball theory using lessons one through four in a practical application. By defending with my legs and my hands and staying tucked in a beach ball, I can easily roll my opponent off as he attacks.
Lesson 5, Mat Pulls. This is an essential exercise to learn how to pin. The key points are to keep your head up and look straight forward. Pull only to a 90 degree angle in your arm. If you pull too far, your hips pop up and you can easily be turned over. Keep your hips down and legs spread apart while digging your toes into the mat. Next, the mat pull and switch. In this exercise, we add a variation of switching from hip to hip. It's important to keep your head straight and not turn your head, otherwise your opponent can turn you over. Keep your hips on the mat and slide your bottom leg all the way through. Here's a practical application on how I switch my hips to keep my balance and maintain the pin on my opponent. Lesson 6, the shrimp curl exercise. This drill is an important movement to learn how to escape and defend in grappling. Move your body across the mat while curling like a shrimp. The key points are to keep your hips off the mat by digging in with your heels. Second is to keep your elbows close to your body while pushing straight over your head. the reverse shrimp curl. Now let's try the same movement backwards. Keep your hips down, elbows in, and pretend you're pushing your opponent away while curling your body into a shrimp. Always keep your head off the mat and your chin tucked in. In this practical application of the reverse shrimp curl, you can see my hips are constantly moving. My elbows are close to my body and I'm constantly pushing my opponent and curling away from him. In this last exercise, here's a great way to increase your hip agility. Pull yourself across the mat, sliding your bottom leg through up to your hip. Try not to use your arms or legs. This is a little bit difficult for beginners, but it can be a lot of fun. Gripping applications. The first thing you must do as your opponent comes closer to you is sit up to one side and defend with your arms and legs. It's a good idea to grab your opponent and gain control of the grip before he grips you. Let's look at a few basic ways to grip and turn over. In our first gripping lesson, the leg sweep, cross grip your opponent's lapel and hold the sleeve just below the elbow. With the bottom of your heel, push his knee out and pull forward on the sleeve. Your other foot stays inside his legs and kicks up to force his body to turn over. Our next gripping lesson, the side roll. From the same position, cross grip and grab your opponent's uniform underneath his tricep. Next, reach around his body and grab his belt. Shoot your hips underneath him so that your body is underneath his center of gravity and roll him to the side, coming up on top. Let's look at three basic ways to start a free practice in grappling. The first is back to back. This is a good way for beginners to start because it forces them to turn and face each other in the proper position. The 
The second starting position is with one person on his knees attacking and the other one on his back defending. It's important for the attacker to maintain balance with his head up and stomach forward until he gets past the legs. The very first movement I teach beginners is to gain control of your opponent's head and chest. From a kneeling position, break through your opponent's defense, bear hug his chest, and control his head by applying pressure underneath his chin with your shoulder. The third way to start from a grappling position is with one person down on their elbows and knees and the other one attacking from his back. This position often occurs in judo after a failed attack or the person blocks the attacker and brings him down to the mat. Because this is the worst position to be in, you must quickly turn and face your opponent. The first thing I do is keep my elbows in and my hands up to protect against a choke or arm lock. Next, I quickly turn and face my opponent. This puts me in a much better position to attack or defend my opponent. Escaping your opponent's leg hold. This is a position that often occurs in judo because by locking your leg, your opponent nullifies all pins. There are four main steps in getting your leg out. First is to control your opponent's chest and head with your body. Second is to walk your foot up. Third is pulling your leg out. And fourth is switching your hips. As we can see, we need to walk your foot up until he only has a hold on your ankle. This loosens the grip and it's much easier for you to get your leg out. After walking your foot up, point your toe, make your legs straight and slide your hips all the way up. This action will pull your foot out. Two important things to remember as I'm freeing my legs are after sliding my hip up, keep the weight or my hip bone directly in my opponent's ear. This will keep him flat on his back. Also, switching my hips will stop him from bridging and turning me over. In the second option, after walking my foot up, instead of switching my hips, I go directly into the pin. After walking my foot up, I pull my opponent's leg, then I push it and place my knee flat on the mat. It's important to use my body weight to pin my opponent's shoulder and head to the mat. Osaiwaza holding techniques. First, let's look at two theories on how to hold your opponent down. The first theory is controlling the head. You can see if I apply pressure to the stomach area, my opponent can still sit up. Now I apply the pressure to the chest, and my opponent still is able to move. If I apply the pressure to his head, this controls my opponent's body and keeps him more attached to the mat.
Now if I use my entire body with this theory, if I pin him on his stomach, he's still able to sit up. As you can see as I move to the chest area, he's still able to move. But if I control the head and the chest, this is the optimal point to pin my opponent. The second theory is in weight distribution. I call this the sack of rice theory, where my body has to float and glide on top of my opponent, much like a sack of rice. The most important thing is that I keep my chest pinned to his chest and keep my body relaxed. This way I use his energy against himself. Kesakatami, neck hold. In our first hold down, it's important to control your opponent's arm by placing it underneath your arm and pulling tight. Next, put your arm around his head, leaving your hand open, and dig your feet into the mat. As your opponent moves, Try to keep your weight distributed diagonally over his body. You can also use your hand to block him from turning you over. Keep your hips on the mat, and most important, relax your body, keep your head up. Be careful not to let your opponent grab your legs with his, because this nullifies the pin. Variation of this hold down is to grab the inside of your leg. This applies maximum pressure to your opponent. But be careful not to get rolled over because your hand is not free to protect you. In this next variation, instead of holding around the neck, my arm is underneath his arm. The weight distribution is the same. What's important here is that I switch my hips to enable my body to maintain balance. A key point in this variation is that I constantly pull up on the arm to control his body. Escaping from Kesakatami. In this hold, we first turn our body in in order to put your leg underneath his center of gravity. It's important to switch your hips hard to get your leg underneath. The next step, once we're underneath, is to bridge up and pull him diagonally over my far shoulder. Again, switch and pull diagonally. Here's a practical application of a throwing technique into Kesika Thomas. Kamishiho Katami, upper four quarters hold. Grip around both of your opponent's arms and grab the belt. As you grab the belt, put your thumb inside his belt and pull tight towards you. Next, lowers your hip and pull your body in tight and then raise your hips up. Apply pressure to the top of his chest by digging in your toes. As he moves side to side, you must also move side to side to keep the pressure on top of his chest. In a variation of this hold, this time we hold one arm around his arm, grabbing the belt, with the other arm inside his arm, also grabbing the belt. 
The difference between this and the last hold down is that your hips must maintain pressure on the mat. Keep your hips down and your head up. Escaping from Kamishio Gatama. First, try to run your opponent in a circle, as if you were to gain control of his leg and nullify the pin. As he moves his body around, we simply turn him over and put him in the same pin. The idea is to make your opponent straight with your body, so he's easier to turn. As you can see, my right hand is helping him flip over by grabbing on the inside of his leg. My left hand, or belt grip, is basically pulling over my head. Once he's in a straight line, you simply flip him over. When you go for that initial belt grip, use your whole body to come across his shoulder and grip as deep as you can. You do this by switching your hips. Here's a practical application of a throwing technique into Kamishio Katami. Kazude Yoko Shio Gatame, side four quarters hold. In this variation of Yoko Shio, you take a belt grip by grabbing all the way down his spine and pulling his head in tight. With your other hand, you grab inside his thigh, keeping your knee slightly bent to protect him from rolling into you. The idea is to maintain control of his head and keep it sideways. Again, Grab the belt directly down the spine, pull your elbow tight, and grab the inside of his leg. Keep your hips down and dig in with your toes, and keep your head up. The most important thing in Kazure Yoko Shiogatame is controlling the head. As we see in this example, if your opponent's head is straight, he can easily bridge straight up. But now as we turn his head to the side and pin it against his shoulder, it's more difficult for him to bridge up and make space to escape the pin. Now let's get back into the pin and show the head control by trapping his head against his shoulder with my arm by pulling in tight. Again, switch your hips also to maintain balance. Escaping from Kazure Kamishio Gatame. First and foremost is to get our hand inside and underneath his body. Once I do this, I use my whole body to arch and bridge up and push that hand through. Again, put the hand underneath his chin, drive it through, and turn and face him. Now if your opponent holds on the opposite side of your neck, we simply turn the other way. Again, work your hand underneath, in between your body and his body, and shoot it out. Push against his head to make some space in order to get your arm through. Here's a practical application of a throwing technique into Yoko Shihokatami.
Hansetsuwaza, arm locks. Safety is the most important thing in teaching arm bars. Make sure that the student understands that if he taps twice, this will relieve the pressure. This is called the tap out. And this is the best way to prevent your students from getting injured. Jujigatami, cross arm lock. Start by placing your foot underneath your opponent's shoulder and stepping over your opponent's head, placing your heel next to his ear. Squeeze your knees together and slowly sit. Keep your opponent's wrist close to your chest and arch to apply the arm lock. Let's take a look at the wrist control. By holding your opponent's hand and keeping his thumb up and pinky down, this enables you to apply the arm lock in a more effective way. As you pull down, arch your hips up for maximum pressure. It's very important also, as you sit, to stay close to his body. The most important thing in this arm lock is to control the head and the arm by squeezing your knees together. First, you must have this control before you can apply the pressure. Let's look at two practical applications of Jujigatami from your opponent attacking from the front. Scoot your hips in and flip him over into Jujigatami. Breaking it down, first control his sleeve grip, scoot in and turn him over. Again, control the sleeve grip. As you're turning, your leg must come down hard on his head. Once we're in this position, clamp down and maintain wrist control. Again, scoot in, pivot, and apply pressure. You can also use your hand to spin your body around by grabbing his inside leg. This also pulls his body on top of you and brings him off balance. Now from a top position, we use a double lapel grip to roll our opponent over into Jujigatami. Breaking it down, again, grab both lapels underneath, shoot your leg through, roll him over, and hook his arm. Move your hips to the side and slide his body off yours into the arm lock. In this next variation, instead of shooting your leg through, you simply post your knee right by his knee and pull his body over. This makes it easier to turn his body. Again, as you roll him over, control his body, then push him off your hips to get the arm lock. Let's look at a throwing combination into Juji Katami. After reaping your opponent's leg, it is important to pin him to the floor with your left knee, stepping across the head and sit close to his body. The main point is that you trap him on the floor before you step through. Here's another throw, Tao Toshi into Juji Gatami. Ude Garami, entangled arm lock.
Starting from the side position, pin your opponent's wrist to the mat. Slide your right hand through and key lock your own hand. You apply the pressure by pulling his arm into his body and up. Again, key lock, pull in, then up. The next variation is a reverse Udegarami. This time, we're applying the pressure in the opposite direction. Pin his wrist, key lock, sit through with your legs, and then push his wrist behind his back. Be careful not to pull your body up too quickly, otherwise he can turn you over. In the variation of this move, if your opponent straightens his arm out, pin his wrist to the mat, key lock at your elbow, and apply the pressure. It's important to pinch his elbow in between your shoulder and your forearm. Maintain the wrist to the mat and lift up with your forearm. Shimewaza, neck holds. Here's a simple way to have your student understand what a choke feels like. In a controlled manner, apply pressure against your student's neck with the side of your wrist. Make sure you explain to them the safety and importance of tapping to keep them from getting injured. Another easy technique for them to familiarize themselves with choking, simply reach inside the lapel, thumb and palm facing out. Then pull your opponent down into you while crossing your arms into your chest. This is a controlled and easy way to show the basic choke. Hadakajime, the basic choke lock. This choke is done without grabbing the gi material. Simply put your arm across the front of his neck, grasp your hands together, and apply the choke by pushing your shoulder and making his head move forward. Okuri Erijime, sliding collar choke. From behind, reach across and grab your opponent's lapel. Start with your thumb behind his ear and slide your thumb across his neck. Grab the inside of the gi with your thumb inside his lapel. Next, from underneath the arm, reach across and grab the far lapel. The actual choke is applied by pulling down on that far lapel. As you pull down, you also pull up with your left hand. The trick to getting a good grip is to feed his lapel into your own hand with your thumb by pushing it across. Then you gain control of the body by using your feet to control his hips. Push down and slide the opponent down your body. This is very important before you actually apply the choke. Push him down, then apply the choke. Again, feed your hand, body control, slide him down your body, and pull down with your right hand. Katahajime, single wing choke. In this next variation, instead of pulling down on the lapel with our right hand, we come across and underneath his arm and put it in back of his head. Again, hook his elbow underneath his arm and back of his head. This variation is important because our opponent puts his chin down to stop us from getting the right grip. So instead, we hook the elbow fall back, bring it behind his neck, which opens up his neck for the choke. When you're falling back, it's important to control his hips with your legs. 
Again, our opponent stops us from getting the right grip. So we fall back underneath the elbow and apply the choke. In this variation, we show a choke into an arm lock. Your opponent knows that you're going to go in for the choke, therefore he holds his arm down so you can't bring it over his head. Simply push his head across into the arm lock. As you fall back, try to pull his arm up, but he stops you. Push his head down, put your leg over the top, into Jujigatan. 